Hello, it's part two of building performance robots, which are going to be heavy duty, agile, fast, powerful, and transportable, unlike lots of my other projects, robots that I can take to shows. For all the times I get asked to take a robot to a comedy performance or to dance behind a DJ or something else. So they're going to be synced up with a puppeteering rig, also to software for syncing and control with lights and sounds. And also, of course, I can use them to take them and talk about STEM education in schools, colleges and universities. So they've got heavy duty stands made of welded steel, which can unbolt for transport. CNC aluminium and welded steel cores with some 3D prints, which are currently in nylon. And the axes I've built so far are ball screw driven and will eventually be driven with brushless motors that we need to fit in this episode. So the motors are mounted on CNC aluminium plates like these ones which are for the other axis and these are the O-Drive branded 150 kV motors straight off the O-Drive website with the encoders as well which are also sold by O-Drive. And the plate that's holding the encoder has a bearing mounted in the bottom which holds the back of the motor to keep it nice and stable and so there's not too much friction or load on the encoder. These two blocks are attached to this extrusion which is V-slot extrusion with T-nuts so they can be slid up and down and of course the encoder mount goes on the top and the motor mount goes on the bottom. So with the motors mounted, we now have a pulley and we're gonna have another pulley on here and a belt, of course, that connects those together and those things are on order. So those motors drive the ball screws and those, of course, push rods that make the arms go up and down. So the design's moved on quite a bit from last time, but of course, what we need to design now are these shoulder hubs. So we've got this axis that pushes the arm all the way up there. And of course, on that axis is mounted another axis that allows quite a lot of range of motion for the arm here so it can of course get its arm above its head and that linear axis still works which causes the shoulder to rotate so it can reach right up above its head. We've also got another axis that allows the arm to rotate which is lower down we'll come on to later but for now we need to make this shoulder hub assembly. So that consists of a 3D print with some bearings mounted in of course and a place to put the other end of that rod. There's also an aluminium plate sandwiched in between that piece and an actual hub here. And that hub is bolted all the way through there and we've got a pulley on here so this whole thing's going to be driven with a belt reduction. So here are my shoulder hubs and obviously there's two of them, one for each side and we've got these bearings inserted in another piece of print. So these are more extruder prints with the Lulzbot more extruder and the inserts are normal extruder prints so I can get the tolerances exactly right. And hopefully on this one where the build lines go this way, this gives me a bit more strength. So inserted into there is a piece of 20 mil studding with a bearing on and two nuts locked together. So that fits in there and that gives me an axis like that and of course it'll be pulled tight so that should rotate round fine. The next piece that goes on is a CNC aluminium plate in 4mm aluminium which fits over there. So I've put some 6mm studding in here that goes all the way through and put some nuts on the back in a minute. And that holds the main rotation piece that's got the other bearing in and the main belt drive. So that should push up nicely like that to make the whole unit. So those of course fit on there and they go this way. So all we need to do is put the push rod in from the ball screw here onto there. And then that will push up as the ball screw goes up and down.
Right, so now the arm starts at this position, which of course is the pivot here, so the arm drops down, and if we wind up the axis, obviously it'll be quicker than this when the motor's on. We should find it goes all the way to there, which puts the arm right out. So the next part we need to do is the next shoulder axis, which moves the arm this way. And bear in mind, there is one further down that allows the arm to rotate, although it's actually sort of still on the upper arm, but quite a way down and not in the shoulder really like a human. But there's not many places we can put it apart from there. This axis, though, um, of course, rotates around this way. And of course, when the arm is lifted up, let's just shift that axis. It will allow the arm to rotate in uh, this motion. So that is a two-stage belt reduction. We're going to have another brushless motor, a slightly smaller one, a 280 kV motor that I've used quite a lot before in other projects like the skateboard projects. And then there's a belt reduction with a two-stage belt that goes onto the pulley we just put on the shoulder. And this is made of both 3D prints and aluminium plates. I think you've seen enough film of CNC and 3D printing, so uh, just here are the parts. We've basically got these parts, we've got some CNC plates, the main one is a 6mm plate, which is probably overkill, and the others are four. So we've got um, some more extruder prints, and we've got some normal extruder prints. We've got the motor there mounted on a 4mm plate as well, it's a 5055 280 kV motor with a T5 pulley on, and all these things get stacked up and basically bolted through, and that's how the whole thing's held together. So there is the first bit of the assembly, which is a plate with a 3D print. Yes, I had to dremel a hole out for the wires because I completely forgot to put that in the prints, but there we go, that's the motor with its pulley. So that faces internally, and I've got countersunk screws here because the actual hub we've already made runs on there and it's very close. So on the other side, we've got a spacer. The 20 mil studding goes straight through there, which makes up that shoulder axis we've already put on. That will get clamped up and also bolted through. And on the back, we've got the back of the motor. So on the back of the motor, there's a 3D printed shim. We've got a thin wall bearing that runs on it. And then the encoder for the motor is gonna run on this. So the bearing fits in there and that fits neatly over there and should align with the three holes. And there's two holes to screw on the encoder. So that of course goes on there. We haven't put the tensioner in there to grab the shaft yet, but we do have a nut on there. Let's pull that up nice and tight. So that seems to run pretty well. We've of course got a big belt that goes on the shoulder there and one on the motor. And in between those is an intermediate gear and that needs to fit in between this plate and the other plate that goes on the inside. So that's my two stage belt reduction sorted. We've got the motor coming onto the big side of the pulley there and the small side going onto the shoulder there. But I want a bit to tension these belts up. So they're pretty good. I've made them pretty much an exact fit, but that one's a bit loose. So what we're going to do is in between these holes, I've left there, we're gonna stick in some bearings that just push that belt up. So there it is, those are those bearings running on that belt there. And of course, if I wanna tension that belt up anymore, then I can just 3D print a barrel to go around those bearings and we can make it slightly bigger Then we don't need any sort of idler. And I've left a similar thing to that around the back. So around the back there, you'll see there's another hole here that I can put another piece of rod in there and we can put more bearings to push this belt up if we need to tension it, but at the moment it's pretty tight. And again, we could 3D print a nice roller on there if the belt ever stretches to tension it up more and more. So the next part of this is a piece of 2020 extrusion that's bolted onto that big six mil plate and that holds the rotational axis that rotates on a vertical axis, at least when the arm is down, like so. And that's the axis we looked at before that can rotate all around like this. So that has a space so I can put stoppers on that hold two bearings top and bottom and that fits on the 2020 and then we have the elbow pivot attached onto that as well as two motors to control them. So let's print those out and have a look at the parts. All right, so there it is. So that is the upper arm that attaches to the forearm essentially at the elbow. So you can see there's a bearing in there and another one in the bottom there hopefully and we've got these little stoppers that fit on the 2020 extrusion. So one of those pushes just in the top and that'll allow me to screw on the extrusion, slot this on, and then the bottom one I've left a gap so that we can put the bottom one in. And those little stoppers, of course, fit the bearing perfectly as well. So that means I can attach this to the 2020 extrusion. And I've even left screws to attach the motors. So there's one of those stoppers on there. And this one, of course, fits that way up. And eventually we're going to put a tooth pulley on there. And then we'll take the other one that fits on the bottom and we'll use this hole to attach it so we can do up the nuts with the T-nuts and the bolts onto that 2020. So now we've got the axis that brings this arm out on these ball screws, so that lifts out that way, then this goes this way and then the arms will be able to rotate this way 
as well as having the elbow. So that gives us basically the three axis we need at the shoulder so far. So we've now got a forearm and an elbow. And of course, all of this is 3D printed, so it's nice and light. And we've got a pulley there, which will have a motor as well as the one for this. So that should give us all of that rotation. And to drive those axes, we're using these fairly heavy duty worm gear right angle gearboxes from Gimson Robotics. So these are 24 volts and about 22 watts. So they draw one amp each at 24 volts and they're metal and pretty heavy duty. And we can see actually the internal gearbox has actually got bearings driving all of those gears. And of course, we've got one of those motors driving this axis and one driving this axis just with belt drives again. This plate is currently plastic, which is a bit bendy. So we'll probably upgrade that to aluminium eventually, but this is just the one for sizing to get that belt tension perfectly right. And at the moment, we've got these pulleys, which are actually separate pieces, and I haven't glued them on yet, which means I can rotate this freely, but eventually we'll glue those pulleys on, which are rings that go around the parts, and that should give us quite a good drive. No, it's not a camera trick. There's really two of them. I started two of them in the first episode and I've actually built two identical robots, which gives us quite a lot of possibilities where they interact with each other or they do a show or they interact with the public. But it's not just for doing shows and doing performances. There's going to be a lot of YouTube content, not only building the robots, but also doing some of the stuff I did in the Ultron, the real robot series, but taking that step further. So I had things where I used the camera to go and track vision so it could track you around the room and things like that. I want to do proper facial recognition with proper libraries like OpenCV and some rudimentary AI perhaps. Obviously we've got the build series for the robots including the electronics, the control, the puppeteering rigs, how we're going to do the software, doing animatronic heads of different styles, doing the cosmetic panels, different manipulators and various other things like that as well as using these robots for collaborations perhaps with a cooking channel and see if we can remotely operate a robot as a kitchen assistant and lots of stuff like that. One extra thing I really want to add before everyone sends me links to 3D printed cycloidal gearboxes and questions why I've used these belt reductions and off-the-shelf gearboxes is that these robots obviously look at the metal they're made to be industrial they're meant to be reliable it's not the sort of thing that works to one or two takes on YouTube Project Ultron was a lot of plastic the motors are pretty underpowered but also my mechanics weren't that great so lots of the feedback pots were stuck on with tape and stuff like that I really wouldn't want to demo that for three days straight all day every day at a maker fair or something whereas these are made to be reliable and they're meant to be easily maintainable so I can just swap out a whole motor and I can see what's gone wrong. There's only one belt reduction. There's two belts here. I can see if the belt's loose. I can see what's gone wrong easily. And they're pretty heavy duty with lots of metal. So hopefully nothing will go wrong and nothing will break. And that means they can work for three days straight at a show. And yes, eventually the robots will be open source as soon as I've put some electronics in and got them moving so we can check the ratios of the belt reduction is right and we've got the powerful enough motors and all of that good stuff. So we'll be publishing all the CAD and code as I go. The same as with Open Dog. So don't forget to check that series out as well. Well... Alright, don't forget to subscribe next time. We're going to put electronics in and get them moving. After that, we're going to build a puppeteering rig. Then we're going to look at playing and recording back performances. And after that, we can move on to doing cosmetic panels, different animatronic heads, doing some different manipulators, and all of that good stuff. Alright, that's all for now.